Yes, it's the classic Atari VCS joystick. What an icon. I love these joysticks. My friend Matt Parker, yes, the YouTube mathematician guy, he was using one in his live show. He was giving it out to the audience to play Pac-Man while they were waiting for the show to start. Trouble was, the cable wouldn't go that far and people were tripping over it. It was a right mess. So I offered to make him a wireless version. If you want to know how I did it, then stick around. When it came to making one of these wireless, there are several challenges involved. You know, to start off with, they're, what, I think they're from the late 70s, right? These are old. <laughs> and they're just made out of plastic, they're made at a price point, they're not particularly reliable. But before I go into how I made it wireless, let's have a look at how these are built. So you've obviously got this very classic rubber membrane on the top, but inside, look, there's one here. This is what it's like inside. Uh, there's the fire button, let's just get rid of that or it'll fly out around all over the place. And you can see there's this central plastic kind of oh, strengthened, don't know what you'd call it really. So this is just like uh, hollow rubber and this is what gives its rigidity inside. Uh, you can see in the bottom there's a little detent, I guess you would call it, a little hollow there. And that sits on a pointy thing in the bottom of the base. And then you can see around the edge, there's these little knobs, nobbles that push the actual buttons. But what are the buttons? Well, let's, let's take a look at one of the circuit boards uh, for these. Oh, where did I put it? Here it is. Look at that. So that says revision one. So this must have been one of the early ones. And you can see it's just got these, well, first of all, let's just take a moment to admire this amazing circuit board design, this PCB design, which I guess back then would have been done by hand. What an absolute masterpiece. And then you can see there's some sticky, I don't know, transparent sticky film. And underneath that, there are these dome buttons uh, that sit on top of the circuit board. And when you push them down, it makes the contact between this little wire here and this little wire there. <clears throat> so very cheaply made. I mean, pretty well designed. And they've last, lasted pretty well, to be honest. Most of them, there's a lot of them. If they've had some heavy play, um, might have got a bit more worn. But there are several problems with it. Well, let's just take a look um, at the cable. The cable is connected straight to the board using these little crimps. Uh, so they just slide straight on and make connection with the metal plating on the circuit board. So problem number one, these circuit boards tend to get a bit corroded. This one is in excellent condition, I have to say, but more often than not, uh, there's corrosion, uh, like here's one of the films and you can see like it's ripped and torn and these dome buttons sometimes lose their springiness. So yeah, it becomes a bit of a mess. What you can do is actually, and here's what I did on this board, uh, I found some really low profile switches and I just replaced the dome buttons uh, that, with these actual switches. Um, and this survived pretty well, but you can see after Matt's tour that uh, one of them one of these buttons, which one is it? This one, it's sort of turned inside out. So even these modern buttons aren't particularly strong. But more than this is actually the uh, middle section. So these over time kind of weaken and I've got so many joysticks, I've got quite a few, <laughs> uh, but most of the central strengthening parts aren't as rigid as this. They're much more likely to be in this sort of state where you can see that outer ring is completely snapped off. I spent quite a lot of time trying to figure out if I could repair these because I kind of felt like they were artifacts. I didn't really want to destroy them too much. So I designed this extra thing and 
you could sit this on top of that like there and those little pegs that were left would even slide in under there and make a sort of workable thing but it just wasn't really rigid enough maybe if I really glued it that would last a little while it might be a way to rescue some of these central parts but in the end uh, I realized that really I'd need to design a new circuit board and use more robust switches and that would mean that the these little knobs were too long because they were expecting the the switches to be a certain height so these would need to be a bit shorter I could file them down but that felt a bit icky so instead I completely redesigned <laughs> that central thing and here it is it's in two parts um, mainly because that's the best way to print it right um, because this bottom section I printed that way you can see it's got lots of hollows in there it would have been very difficult to print that way so I print that that way and I print this central column this way and then inside here there is a little nut that I've slid in underneath and put a bolt through the top can you see it in there and this is actually pretty strong however <laughs> after a tour's worth of playing this these red sections it's done in PT so it's very strong but it's still after lots of playing just snapped off so my new version actually uses some flexible filament you can see compared to this this one uses like uh, gaps to create the flexibility whereas this one is just completely solid and it's using like flex filament I think it's like cheetah you know the ninja flex cheetah material so not like super bendy but just bendy enough to give and I'm hoping that that won't snap anymore so that's the mechanical side, but what about the electronic side? Well, if you wanted, let's say you just wanted to modernize your Atari joystick. Uh, so you can use it with your computer, so you can use it with MAME or whatever. It's a very easy way to convert this circuit board into something that emulates key presses using more or less any kind of Arduino. Um, but for my first experiment, this was quite a while ago I did this quite a few years ago I think I used one of these which is an Adafruit uh, Trinket Pro there we are and I just soldered a bunch of these crimp connectors on <laughs> you can program this uh, trinket so that it acts like a USB keyboard so you can plug it into your computer uh, and then you can write some code that reads the button presses and converts them into key presses uh, and because I used these crimps, it meant I could slide it onto, slide them onto there. And I didn't have to make any more electronics at all. It was a really fun little easy project. I should say that some of these, even though they look all right, there might be sort of a bit of crap underneath this dome and they don't always tend to be super reliable. And also these crimp connections, uh, even on the originals, tend to get a bit dirty and they might not always give you a really good contact but still if you're lucky enough to get a clean one you'll probably be all right so that's how I get some electronics in but what about if I wanted it to be wireless well turns out that Adafruit do some feathers uh, which is their sort of mini Arduino platform they do some feathers with radio controllers on and I use the RFM69 Adafruit uh, feather uh, and this uses I think the 868 uh, megahertz radio so you can see there like this is my early prototype with a bit of wiring <laughs> and uh, also adding a little battery you basically got a wireless joystick right you can I've written some code that runs on this feather it reads the inputs to see which buttons are pressed, transmits it over the radio uh, using the reliable datagram, if I remember correctly. Uh, if you're interested, I'll, I'll post up the code. Um, and then at the other end, I've got another uh, feather in this very cute little 
enclosure that I designed. More on that in a minute. But inside here is another feather, the RFM69, and this is the receiver. And this plugs into your computer and pretends to be a keyboard, just as though, just like in, with the Arduino version, which I plugged straight into the computer. So that's how it works. But this, this whole setup, that's not, that's, I'm not happy with that, right? So I spent some time designing a circuit board and I ended up designing something that was very like a, a recreation of the original. So you can see the footprint is the same. See where all those holes are? The holes are where the little joystick, um, I don't know, it's got a few pillars inside and it's it, the pillars go inside the holes. This, I'll just show you what I mean. So here's the joystick top section. Now I have to try and get this the right way around. But can you see if I put that in there? Those holes line up and they hold that circuit board in place. Honestly, this project was mostly sort of mechanical design. So, well, let's let's open up one that I've I've made already. So this is the one I showed you at the beginning of the episode. Let's just take a look at that. They have four screws holding them together. Be careful with these screws because it's really easy to strip the threads inside the plastic. So be careful when you're screwing them back up. That Use that classic technique of just turning them backwards a little bit until it finds the thread before you screw it back in again. Uh, yeah, so just four screws holding the whole thing together. So the challenge I had with designing the circuit board is that, well, let's, let's just look at it. Let's take a look at this circuit board. What do I need? I need somewhere to put the feather, which is here. I need somewhere to get the USB signal out of the joystick, outside of the joystick. Can you see it there? That's, that's where I ended up. Um, I also need some switches on the top and I need a battery uh, connection there. So that's, that's, you know, that's essentially the design of it. If we look inside here, if you're opening these, do it sideways because otherwise the red button falls out and you, often you'll just sort of totally lose the little spring. <laughs> like the button has this tiny little spring on it. I ended up just like putting a teeny bit of super glue in to stop the spring flying out because every time you open it, like inevitably the button just like falls out <laughs> and the spring goes flying. So there's a little tip for you. If you're using one of these, just put a tiny bit of super glue or something, just stop that spring flying away. So you can see inside there, that's the flexible filament base. And you can see as I move the joystick, that turns up and down. And there's a little pointy bit in the base. Can you see that there? That this little indentation sits on and it sort of rocks back and forth on this base there. There's not much room in this joystick, um, but the f so you can see like the feather, can you see the footprint of the feather here with the pins? Uh, I can't really point at those very easily in reverse. It's there. Uh, it's at an angle because that's kind of the only place it would fit. <laughs> um, but let's take this out and you can see it. If I can unplug it. held in really firm. I'll explain how this is held in later, but yeah, there we are. So you can see the feather is actually mounted upside down <laughs> on that board to squeeze it in. I must admit, it's been quite interesting coming back to this circuit design because I designed it quite a few years ago. Matt did his first tour with one of these um, and then his tour was cancelled because of COVID and it's like three years later and he's going back on the road. So I've had to open these up and look at them and it's been interesting to kind of think about 
the decisions I made back then and how I'd do it differently now. I mean, really, the best way to do this would be to design it with a 32U4, like the same process as, as in the Feather. Like, I'd design a custom board with this 32U4 on and the radio module, and I'd get rid of the Feather completely and just design my own. That would have been the next step of design, but this is still sort of a kind of prototype stage. Like the really annoying thing about this is that, and this I think is a pretty big design limitation of the feathers, is that there's no way to get the data in and out of the USB socket without like this awful hack where I put in a little USB plug and I'm just feeding the cables onto the board. There, those little cables. It's, I mean, it's just a, a horrible hack. The other thing you can't get off them is like the battery charge light. So another thing I'm doing is like taking a little signal from the battery charge light so I can push that to the outside. Anyway, let's talk about the outside because the outside there is um, a USB socket, a little indicator light. It's actually a NeoPixel under there and just that plastic thing is a bit of 3D print in order to sort of uh, transmit the light out. There's a power switch too under there. So that's those three things. Um, the USB is to charge the battery, but it's also to send data through. So let's say your radio isn't working. You can actually just plug this in to your computer USB socket, and it becomes like the same virtual keyboard type thing as before. So if the radio for whatever reason isn't working, you can still just revert to plugging in a USB cable. So a bit of redundancy there. So yeah, for ages I was thinking, well, how do I get the USB from this to the outside? And in the end, I made this little board here. You can see it there. I haven't had to drill any extra holes in the uh, joystick. You know, it's quite important to me to keep it as uh, pristine and original as possible. Um, but how to make a connector that goes from one to the other? I looked at all kinds of ribbon connectors and things. I had very little room. I didn't have much vertical height. Like since I made these, I've encountered a lot more different board connectors, so I could use something else. But actually, this is quite a good pin header. Um, it's surface mount, and the holes go all the way through. So you can see these pins are quite long. They actually sit on top of that and go all the way through the board. And that essentially is how I transmit, transfer all of the data that I need and power to the outside of the box. In the original prototype that I made, I actually sort of packed that with a bit of Sugru. Can you see that? Still reversible, essentially, but um, just a lot neater. I always meant to do it with these, but I never got around to it. So this is where it's at. So yeah, I can turn this on with this little switch. I didn't want it to be too accessible because this being used by random members of the audience. Um, I didn't want them to accidentally turn it off. And then you can see that that, whenever I push a button, that, chain, that flash is a different color to tell me that it's being pushed. And then the other end, the receiver picks that up and send it to my computer as a bunch of key presses. I think that's probably, that's kind of it, right? I guess there's lots of uh, stuff to figure out to try and find the right switches, reliable switches, uh, designing the mechanics of the board to fit uh, was all, is always a bit of a um, painstaking process. Uh, plus then also, you know, I wanted to kind of restore these. So you'll see that on most of these joysticks, if you ever encounter any, like the, the paint around here is completely worn off, or maybe some of them didn't have paint, I'm not sure. But you can see here on this one, the paint is really worn and faded. So I got myself some paint pens and very carefully reapplied the paint around there. So that's very pleasing. Yeah, you know, give it a real proper clean up and yeah, bring some of these joysticks back to life. So one final thing is that because I've used these little switches, they do have a tiny bit of click to them. Can you hear that? Put it on the microphone. 
So it's just that little bit of extra tactile feedback. I'm not sure if the originals really had that. Like when you push one of these, you can sometimes feel a little click, a little one, but it's not quite so strong. And certainly the ones I've seen have sort of lost their click. Interestingly, um, there's two different designs of board. Like this is a more modern one. You can see the uh, crimp connections on two sides there. And this is, it says revision one on this one. So I assume this is older. Uh, but I think they were making them like pretty well into the 80s, right? With all the um, Atari consoles that were coming out. So then, yeah, finally, let's just talk real briefly about this. I wanted to make a really small feather enclosure. Um, so yeah, I designed this to basically fit exactly. Uh, and it just uses four screws and it screws into the um, screws into the plastic. Yeah, and there's a tiny little hole for it. And the fun part is that there is, like, there's obviously a couple of lights on the feather, so you wanna see that. So I just used a tiny bit of transparent 3D filament as a light pipe. We could plug this in, couldn't we? Uh, do I have a cable? I've got a really short cable, so this should be fun. Uh, will you see it? Will it stretch? There you go. So you get getting the lights transferred through the circuit board up to the top of the case. That works really well. Plus, if you look very closely, there's a, um, a an indentation like there at the bottom of the M for mat, which is the reset button. So you can use a pen to reset it. And then I've actually also added another button here, which turns on and off the receiver. Um, and the way I've done that, well, it's all printed in place. If you can see there, I've soldered a little button just across two analog pins. I've set one to ground and I've set the other one as a, a pull up resistor. So I can tell when this button is pressed and you can see I've printed that little button in place with that clever little spring there. <laughs> And so, yeah, um, it's actually printed flat, but when you push it in, it pops out. <laughs> so this is printed face down like that. And it's quite a good little design. It's those sort of mechanical things that just take ages to get right. Oh, you might also be interested to know that there was a remote, uh, a radio controlled joystick that Atari brought out. I've never, ever seen one, but I found an advert for it put it on screen now um, and it's well chunky isn't it really really large case very expensive and um, it'd be fun to see if any of those still exist but yeah this is t using modern technology and bringing this classic old icon up to date and being used in an actual show anyway any questions do let me know um, going to try and do a few more videos in this sort of style more of a sort of recorded as live uh, and I've got so many projects to share with you so please if you have any questions leave them in the comments below I'll try and get to it as many as I can or I'll make a new video thanks so much I'll see you at the next one <laughs>